Did you know, for every iconic Nintendo character like Mario, Link or Donkey Kong, there's a Nintendo character that was lost to time, scrapped before they even had a chance to shine. In this video we'll be talking about a few of the more interesting and eccentric lost Nintendo characters, some that were cut from a game that was actually released, and others that went down with a game that was cancelled entirely. The first character we're talking about is actually unique in that they fall somewhere between those two categories. We have previously talked about a game called Diddy Kong Pilot. This was a Game Boy Advance title that got scrapped when Rare was bought by Microsoft and was later revived and reworked into Banjo Pilot. The game was shown off in 2001, and several screenshots of the game were sent out to video games news outlets like IGN and GameSpot. One of those screenshots showed Diddy, DK, Cranky, Dixie, Crunch the Kremlin, K. Rule, and this unnamed Kong member on the character select screen. The character seemed to embrace several cultural stereotypes of white farmers in the American South, which led to fans dubbing them Hillbilly Kong and even Bumpkin Kong. Obviously Diddy Kong Pilot was scrapped and reworked into Banjo Pilot, which left all the characters in the original game on the cutting room floor. But fans were curious about this Kong. All the other Kongs had been in a release title, and since Microsoft purchased Rare, it was now unlikely they'd ever see him in an actual game. One curious fan was DK Vine's Chad McKenna, who wrote into Scribes, a section of the Rare website where staff would respond to fan letters. Chad asked about the cancelled Kong and what his actual name was. Rare gave an official response, saying, Don't worry about it. He's being killed off now anyway. Although this was a pretty disappointing reply, DK Vine's persistence would eventually pay off. Almost a decade later, the site managed to get in touch with a rare employee who dropped some details about the elusive Kong. The developer, whose identity was kept a secret, told DK Vine the hillbilly was known as Redneck Kong, and was a very short lived idea from the designer of the project, sometime during the time that screenshot was obviously captured. Although fans finally had his official name, Redneck Kong was seemingly never playable. Redneck had a fleeting existence and isn't playable in any of the game's builds that have leaked over the years. The character was replaced by Candy Kong in later versions of the game before it was canned. The next character we're talking about is also from the Donkey Kong universe. After the re-release of Donkey Kong Land on the Game Boy, some fans looked back through the game's pre-release media and noticed that a few elements shown off in magazines were absent from the final game. On DK Vine's forums, user matdog one million posted an image from Nintendo Power showing what's likely a Kong helper character wearing a hat. Matt Dog said, This guy was never given a name, but by the looks of him, I'd assume he'd be a Big Ape City resident, so I call him City Kong, unless you guys have another name for him. Since this post, fans have also named the character Hat Kong and Commuter Kong, and a whole bunch of other names. But there's been no official word on what the character's actual name was or their function in the game, and unless someone at Rare spills the beans, it seems likely it'll stay that way. The following lost character doesn't have any art to illustrate them, but a simple description of them will likely conjure up vivid imagery in your mind's eye. When the original Mario Tennis was created for the Nintendo 64, the game's developers Camelot introduced a new character to complement Wario and mirror the partnership Mario has with Luigi. We're of course talking about Waluigi. But this isn't the only character that Camelot proposed to Nintendo. They also threw around the idea of expanding the motif of having an evil doppelganger to Peach, giving her a sort of Waru Peachy counterpart that was akin to Wario and Waluigi. This information comes from Nintendo's own Japanese website, where Camelot staff talked about pitching the idea. One developer said it was absolutely not cute, and looked something like Wario in a dress. I don't know, sounds pretty cute to me. Unfortunately for the team, the pitch was shot down by Nintendo. It seems that in the final game, Princess Daisy was added so that Peach had someone similar to pair up with. Our next character goes all the way back to when The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was still known as Zelda 64. This early version of the title was featured in several gaming magazines, showing off a Navulous Link and a few non-playable characters. One of those NPCs was a woman who never appeared in the final game. 
And according to one alleged Nintendo insider who spoke to the fansite Zelda Power, her name was Arya. Arya apparently served a similar purpose to Navi in the early game, giving players tips at various locations across Hyrule. It's also likely that her model was reused, and the various Arya models that Link spoke to were in fact completely different characters using the same assets. It's also believed she may have some connection to the Kuko Lady in the final game, as both of their models have similarities in their dress. By some stroke of luck, Arya's model and animation data are still within the retail version of Ocarina of Time, where our sweet, beautiful Arya is simply labelled as Object Human. Fans tried to properly restore Arya's model for over a decade. Most attempts tried loading Arya's assets over Adult Malon's actor data since they appeared to be roughly the same shape. However, Arya's model is very archaic, and its associated data is actually closer to Mario 64's NPCs than models from Ocarina of Time. Most attempts to restore her were only partially successful, leading to distortions in the model and strange animations. It wasn't until November 2010 that Zelda hacker Spinout182 discovered how to load Arya's model and animations in the model viewer Z Sarton. And this was further refined by Nicholas Vitale in 2011, who managed to get a fairly complete version of Arya working properly in-game. So, unless some earlier data from Zelda 64's development is found, this is probably about as close as we'll get to experiencing Arya from those early screenshots. Arya is followed up on our list by a character that went down with the game they starred in. M09 was a cyborg tasked with saving the world, and the protagonist of Project Hammer for the Nintendo Wii. M09 was created in 2050 when the Project Hammer experiment was conducted by an unknown scientist. Later in 2089, M09 was recovered and reactivated by a technician in order to help combat a global threat. The title was set in a future United States during a robot invasion, and players would use the Wiimote and Nunchuck to utilise M09 and his giant hammer. The game had a mission structure where players fight waves of robots building up to a boss battle at the end of each stage, similar to the Dynasty Warriors style games. Project Hammer was being developed by Nintendo Software Technology, or NST for short. Starting development in 2003, the game was finally shown off at E3 2006. Around the time of its reveal, many developers thought the game wasn't up to Nintendo's standards. The US developers and Japanese management disagreed on how to improve the game, however, and the game wasn't shown publicly for several years. It was later reported that development resources had been shifted to other upcoming titles, and the game was cancelled in 2009 after Nintendo pulled its funding. For a brief time, the game was also being reworked into a title called Wii Crush, where M09 was seemingly cut from the equation and replaced with me characters. M09 at least got to show us what they could do in-game. But the next lost character wasn't so lucky. At Nintendo's 2013 E3 press conference, Shigeru Miyamoto took the stage and finally revealed Pikmin 3 for the Wii U. While the title's gameplay was being demoed, a piece of concept art popped up showing a cast of four characters. But the final game only had three characters in the landing crew, not four. In the concept art, each character has a letter under their name. Alf has the letter A under him, Brittany has the letter B, Charlie has a letter C, and this unused character has a D under them. Since each letter corresponds to the first letter of the character's names, it's thought that D may have had an actual name starting with D during development, but this was never revealed. Some fans have even speculated that D's name may have been Drake, and that when D was cut, some of his attributes were given to the talking ship, the SS Drake. But, as we've said, this is just speculation. It's also believed that D was cut because micromanaging four different characters at the same time was just too much for the player to handle, and the game was scaled back to having just three on your crew. The following character is another that got scrapped along with their game. Dorin the Dragon was the protagonist of Dragon Hopper, a Virtual Boy title being developed by Intelligent Systems and planned to be published by Nintendo. The game was shown off at Nintendo's Space World 1995 event, and later again at E3 1996, as well as in an issue of Nintendo Power. 
Dragonhopper was an adventure title with a top-down perspective. It took place in a series of tower-like structures where Doran leaps up or down to new platforms, with the Virtual Boy's 3D effect making the floors appear closer and further away. The game had light platforming and puzzle elements, and was reminiscent of a Link to the Past's multi-layered dungeons. The fansite Planet Virtual Boy sums up the game's story as such. Doran, the Dragon Prince, lived a happy life in the magical kingdom of Celestia, until the king's power-hungry Prime Minister captured and jailed his family, the king, the queen, and Doran's love, Diana. Pursued by soldiers, Doran fled his home. As he ran away, he tripped and fell into a mysterious hole, landing in the land of Faerun. Now he has to get back to the surface and save Celestia. Despite Dragonhopper apparently being finished, the game was never released due to the poor sales of the Virtual Boy system. Ho, oh, what could have been? Did you know that over half a dozen Nintendo TV shows and movies have been cancelled over the years, some of which have never been seen? For more on that, click the link on the screen. And for more of my antics, including a deep analysis on which Animal Crossing villager would be the most delicious, head over to Backseat. It's not as mean as it sounds, I promise.